Nigerian singer sentenced to death for blasphemy in Kano State, Nigeria. A musician in Nigeria's northern state of Kano has been sentenced to death by hanging for blasphemy against the Prophet Muhammad. An upper Sharia court in the Hwasawa, oh, sorry, I butchered that, um, fill in the hockey area of the state said Yahya Sharif Amunu. Uh, who's 22, was guilty of committing blasphemy for a song he circulated via WhatsApp in March. Protesters had burnt down his family home and gathered outside the headquarters of the Islamic police, known as Hizbah, uh, demanding action against him. States across the Muslim major majority northern Nigeria use both secular and Sharia law, which does not apply to non-Muslims. So obviously this is really terrible um, and this highlights one of the reasons why we want to talk about Nigeria more and more because the fight for secularism in Nigeria I think is going to become increasingly prominent in the next few years. And it also harkens back to um, the case of Mubarak Bala who has been held incommunicado he's the president of the nigerian humanist society and he's been held incommunicado refused access to his lawyers and at this point the police are refusing to um prove that he's alive and he's been missing for over 100 days um so yeah the situation is pretty severe there what are you guys thoughts on this I have something to say about this. So there's several things. So this gentleman is being sentenced to death for blasphemy. He wrote a song praising an imam, okay? So he is actually writing an Islamic song about praising an imam, you know, for people who don't know, like a preacher, an Islamic preacher. And they were saying he praised him too much, and thus it created the it inferred that he was putting him above the prophet. So it wasn't like he wrote, you know, a song saying Muhammad sucks or something. No, he wrote a song about an imam and there, what did he say? What was it? What would uh, he say? The song was considered blasphemous as it praised an imam from the Tijania Muslim brotherhood to the extent they believe it elevated him being the imam above the prophet. But do you know what was the wording? I, I have the quote. Okay. Um, he was alleged to have said that Sheikh Ibrahim Nasi, a Sinhalese cleric credited with reviving the um, Tijana sect uh, was and spreading it across with Africa, was, quote, bigger than Prophet Muhammad. Oh, so basically you're, he said so somebody he was so great. He said, you're so great, you're better than the Prophet Muhammad. Or you're that's the why biggest, bigger, bigger. than... Bigger, so he's he, gonna. That's that's what he's getting executed for. Okay, but, that's more than what I understood it to be. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Reminds that, me of the John Lennon thing where they said we're bigger, he's than, bigger Jesus. than Jesus. That is, um, by the way, that is for for a lot of Muslims. That's one of the worst things you could say, right? But here's the thing: How does Nigeria's Nigeria is half Muslim, half Christian, right? Mm -hmm. So how does the how does the law work? How does it how does the Sharia they have Sharia courts? So like do you have different laws for different people? Is that exactly, how it works? Exactly, which was yeah. what I was gonna say, which is actually even ho just as horrible that this guy can't say what he wants to say and he's being put to death for it. Because he's but, a Muslim. Because he's a Muslim, but that they have separate laws for separate people. It's one mm. law for all. Right? So if you're well, Muslim, you have this certain prohibitions whereas other people can do things that you can't or they have different court i mean it is just really patently unequal and apparently uh, this guy this singer yahya sharif aminu is an islamic gospel musician like he is a believer he is a practicer but it, he's kind of just more popular within his sect and when saying that this guy who helped spread the popularity of his sect is bigger than Muhammad, like that's when he got into all this trouble. He went into hiding. He went into hiding before they found him and arrested him. And now um, 
yeah, the, the Islamic police literally had to appeal to people not to take the law into their own hands. Wait, so just to be clear, if this guy was not a Muslim, um, he wouldn't be tr trialed in, in, in Sharia court? Like, he wouldn't, like if, he, if this was a Christian who blasphemed against Muhammad, uh, he would be okay? Like, well, I mean, he would still have to worry about the mob, but he wouldn't get a death sentence in Nigeria? Is that how it works? Well, it says there's this discussion about how the Sharia courts work. So 12 states in Nigeria's Muslim dominated the north. They operate on this Sharia system of justice, but only Muslims can be tried in these Sharia courts. So I don't exactly know. The Sharia system, it has its court of appeal, criminal, civil, Muslims, and they can challenge these uh, uh, judgments in not just the Sharia court, but they can also be judged or appeal in secular courts as well but um the and the sharia judges are supposed to know the secular laws as well as the muslim laws and now if a case involves a muslim and a non-muslim the non-muslim has the option of choosing where they want the case to be heard so oh, okay. but the sharia case the sharia court I wrote this down. The Sharia court can only hear the case if the non-Muslim gives their consent. So I'm assuming a non-Muslim accused of blasphemy is not going to consent to being uh, having their case heard in a Sharia court where they could potentially be sentenced to death. I don't know. Well, except for the fact that it doesn't matter if you are currently a Muslim or not. Mubarak Bala is an ex-Muslim. He's not a Muslim, but because he was and comes from a family with, right. I believe, some religious status, he's being tried in Sharia court regardless. So it doesn't it would matter well, it's your faith background. Not I was thinking like current. of a Christian yeah. versus a Muslim, not someone who comes from a Muslim. Because it seems like in these situations you don't, they perceive that you can't leave this you are what your family is what you've always been and that's mm -hmm. the way it is and like this yahya guy you know the um the right, singer guys, or whatever i need to read some um member comments aj who's our new member she's saying of course it was sharia court um yep and then we have another member we got a super chat as well uh ethan is saying it seems similar to the u.s military court uh, military courts I know I don't it's not similar because why because um there's a justification for there's actually like a pragmatic justification for why soldiers have to have their own court right separate laws for the soldiers like you could actually argue that whether you agree with it or disagree with it but at least there's some reasoning behind it it's different from you, half of your citizens to be abiding by some laws and the other half abiding by different laws uh, just because, you know, sky daddies, having different sky daddies, right? That doesn't make sense, right? Um, but, yeah, so Ethan, but I think Ethan is referring to having the different laws for soldiers, right? Uh, and then, hold on, uh, super chat, but you got a super chat, $10 super chat from Nilofar, thank you, thank you, Nilofar, saying support for AR. Uh, Rivka, you want to say something? I just wanted to say, like, I understand his thought process, like it's, uh, the military court is different and the rules are different about evidence and what you can see and what you can't see and, and, and all the presentations and how the lawyers and all kinds of other things. But I don't believe that soldiers once they're or whomever, if you're discharged from the military, you then you go back to that civilian court. You're not always having to be forced to go back to a military court if you're a civilian. Whereas in the Sharia courts, if you're a Muslim, you don't have the option of going to any other court. You can't mm. un-Muslim yourself. You can't get out of being a Muslim. I mean, technically you can, but they don't accept it. That's what I mean, according to yeah. the court. Yes. Um, I, think, because... I think the good news uh, about this is probably the death sentence won't be carried out because oh. like, several, several sentences have been passed in Nigeria, death sentences, but only one has been carried out till date, and that was a murder case. So it's likely that it won't be carried out, but it's still frightening. Well, we still have to fight against it to ensure that that doesn't happen. Yeah. 
you know, like with Asia Bibi, like you, you have to fight to make sure that she's not the first to. Yeah, for example, like, uh, for example, there was at? this sentence, there was this sentence in Nigeria about this woman having extramarital sex, and she was given the death sentence, but because of the condemnation, widespread condemnation, it wasn't carried out. So, yeah, that's probably... I didn't, pay, I didn't pay attention to this, but P2020 is highlighting the fact that Rivka used the term un-Muslim. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna steal this from Rivka. I'm going to tell Muslim to un-Muslim yourself. Un- you can, uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. Un-Muslim yourself. Yeah, that's a good phrase. I'm going to steal that. Um, can I uh, just read have this? someone in the live chat who's pro-death penalty for blasphemy. Which yeah, I, I know. Incredible. And guess what? what? He's what? a Muslim. He's Muslim and he's pro-death penalty. You guys can see the correlation, right? What? Um, it's- Suleiman. Uh, what? I didn't hear any of that because when you yell, Rivka, your microphone cuts you out. It's the anti-Semitism. Uh, Sul- <laughs> Suleiman, famous for killing Christians. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Sul- Suleiman is like he's true to his name. True to his name. Um, Peach, by the way, hashtag not all. Hashtag not all, okay? Yeah. Not all not Muslims. Not all Suleimans. Are, not all Suleimans <laughs> and not all Muslims are as despicable as uh, the Suleiman right now in the live chat, okay? So uh, Suleiman, not only Suleiman in the live chat, not only supports the death penalty, he supports the death penalty for blasphemy. So that's how this, how horrible this person is. Um, but I do want to. Yeah, if your religion dictates what I get to say when I don't follow it, that's not freedom. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good. It's good to have, like, because some people say, like, do Muslims, do some Muslims actually believe these things? So it's good that we have, like, a Muslim to come and demonstrate for the rest of us in life. Chat. Like, yes, yes, we do. So, like, thank you for embarrassing Islam for us. You're, you're making our job a lot easier. Thank you, Suleiman. <laughs> um, the top comment on the post that we made about this on Facebook is by Bob. Bob is saying, Blasphemy laws are blasphemy. How dare someone pass a law saying that, that a god cannot defend himself for from naysayers? How dare they question God's ability to handle his own dissenter, dissenters? Seems like a complete lack of faith to me. Yes, blasphemy laws are blasphemous. And we should use blasphemy laws against people who came up with blasphemy laws. I don't know. It's going to cancel all, all of them um news thank you for joining us subscribe to our channel hit the bell thingy if you haven't i don't know why what has what's holding you back okay if you haven't subscribed to our channel why haven't you subscribed to our channel explain that to us please like bell <laughs> and also if you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because youtube is not telling people that we have shows because youtube is like oh this person told us that they want to get your shows, right? They want to get your videos, but nah, you, we think it's no. And oh, look, oh, they also hit the bell button, but nah, you guys are too controversial. We want to show them mainstream stuff. We want to show them CNN or cat videos or whatever. But even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah, subscribe to our newsletter as well. And share, share our videos because... You know, we do get demonetized, that's an obvious, on every one of our videos, so F that, but we don't care about that anymore. <laughs> but we also get deprioritized, and that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right, and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages, and that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow, so we need you guys to share our videos. 